Hello friends, welcome to my channel Sushant Chess Points. Once again, we are going to do a live DM today and let's see how we are able to apply the gambits we have, which we have been learning. Okay, so let's get started with the game. See, these are three two games, so maintaining very high accuracy is a bit difficult, but we will see the opening phase and what kind of positions we get from the openings. Let's start. So we have the white pieces here. Let's see which gambit we will be able to use. So we have chances of using the boring gambit. So this NC6 move is not a great one. Instantly we can take and play NF3 and get our development going well. Already a slight edge to white we can say. Now see F7 is attacked so maybe it's necessary to play NF6 or Queen F6. See already the position is a bit better. And after long castle you can make out the development is more already there is threat of E5. Very interesting move is H4. I allowed BG4 I think. Maybe I should have not played castle. H4 would allow bishop g4. Moving the bishop would also allow that. So maybe takes takes knight d5. We can try to go knight f6. Already the threat is knight f6. So after all the trades on f6. And e6, we won't have much over there. So we can trade on f6 and then not trade on e6, which would give us a good endgame. Let's do bd5. So that bishop takes, then rook takes. Black's pawn structure is bit ruined, but see, this was the point. Now takes, takes, d6 is gone. And this should be a winning endgame. All we have to do is trade pieces properly. See, one more pawn is given up. We have a winning game. Two pawns extra. So let's trade the pieces. Takes, takes, KD1, rook check, king can go to e2. Otherwise the other rook is heading to d7. Also threat is rook d8, rook d8, rook a7. Now see rook d8 check then ke2. We have extra pawn on both sides. We can make a majority on the queen side if we wish. We can take the a pawn. He wants to go maybe rook d4. So we can play f3, protect e4. Next move will be rook a7. So he simply allowed rook a7. Rook a7, rook b8, b3, that is an option. So let's go b3 first. See rook a7 or rook c7, they are not running away. So he wanted this. So takes, takes, we can do that. Now rook can go to b4 and pawn can be moved soon. King will come to the queen side, to the head of the pawn. This is a very simple technique. Let's attack c6. King comes to b3 and we advance the pawn, a pawn. c6 given up for a4. Want to be a great trade. Let's set the king to b3 or b4. check k3 rook c3 and rook can be brought to d3 in fact he is allowing a4 as well so first let's improvise the rook rook b3 will cut off his rook and we can just push the f1 so i think that should be a very easy way of playing 
Another option was A5 and reading the rooks. Now all the pawns are protected, king can be taken to b4. So kb3, king takes b3 and this is a very easy way. King is heading to d5, let's take the e-pawn, let's start pushing the h-pawn as well. Now look at h7 check, let's move. Many a times there are Troy's tendencies, he can sack the rook. So let's leave that pawn on a7. Let's take e5 and push the e and the f pawns. Okay. So let's make it a very simple winning position. We can get to the Lucena position very easily. Announcement. There were many other ways to win also, but I tried to play a bit first because a couple of days before I played the game explaining a lot and then I ended up losing the game. So here I tried to play a bit quickly, little bit I think the rook end game could have been managed better. I hope you are finding these lessons useful. Do let me know in the comments below. Thanks for your time.